Hello, hello, General Hospital Daily Recap fans. This recap is for um, Wednesday, June the 22nd, Wednesday, June 22nd, 2022. It was a, you could tell this episode is one of those filler episodes. It could have been placed at any point in time, which was interesting because it didn't follow any current storylines. So the episode they played today, they could have played next week because the way they ended yesterday's episode is Laura got a call from Alexis. See, they could have added that in at the end of whatever show. And then they threw in this filler episode, but it was a, actually it was kind of a cute filler episode to me. It did some flashback scenes that really brought you back. It brought me back in time. So I like the way that they did that. But the whole show centered around Laura, the whole show. And it was interesting. You could tell it even started really outside the studio with her pulling into her parking space, even though it said General Hospital, but that's probably what it says outside the, the uh, studio. <laughs> lot stage, sound stage, but it was crisp and clean. And she goes in and uh, to General Hospital and there's this, this meeting, but it's a meeting of her friends. But then on her way up to the meeting, she runs into Finn and Violet and Sunny. And I think Harrison even walks in and, you know, there's some interaction there. Everybody said, oh my God, how's she going to handle it? Does she seem okay? And you're wondering, what do you mean, does she seem okay? Um, and then they're still sprinkling in Epiphany, taking her MCATs for, you know, to become an intern to get into medical school, um, which we, we know she will. She'll be a doctor next year, um, the way that's going to work. But anyway, <laughs> she'll be an intern next year. Um, but the, it was just really cute. And then she gets upstairs and We've got, you know, people in the room. We've got Sam. We've got Curtis. We have Mac. We have Robert. You know, we have, um, let's see, who else was there? Felicia was there. And, you know, her friends. Anna was there. And they were all, was Anna there? I can't quite remember if Anna was truly there. But all her core friends were there. And they were all going to break up and, and offer support to try to find out. And we find out what the real deal is. The real deal is Alexis had to publish an article. And it was from this group called the Friends of Port Charles. Okay. And it was a ton of signatures to recall Laura as the mayor. Now, one of the things we really did find out, and I'm going to get to that later, is that's bogus signatures they collected. They kind of bait and switched people into signing. People were thinking they were signing something else. Um, but this is what the journey of this episode was. You know, oh, Carly, Carly was definitely there. So we make one of the journeys, one of the stops was um, Scott. Laura goes up to see Scott after the meeting. And people were kind of teasing Scott as, look, you run into Laura's uh, defense. Does Lisa know? Because look, Lisa, you don't want to mess with her. And it was so funny. And he, he actually kind of thought, oh, wait a minute, how does my schnitzel feel about this? But that's another story. I'll, I'll get to that later. It's too cute, those two. But she goes up and she thanks him you know, for, for helping her. And he shows her this folder with all these names that they got that were listed in the actual article that Alexis had to uh, publish. And he circled uh, a name and he showed it to her. But first, they did this great little cute back flash of Scotty and Laura's wedding. And I remember that day, I was definitely watching because they went through their trials and their tribulations because she was so, so young. I think Laura was 17, you know, probably 16 when she fell in love with Scotty, her Scotty, you know. So they had that wedding scene and her bright eyes as she's saying her vows to him, it was just, it brought me back, okay. 
So he shows her a name that's on the petition. And the petition happened to be Bobby. So Laura goes up to, to Bobby's office and kind of confronts her as to why would you, you know, so you hate me that much? You've never forgiven me for what? You know, and they kind of talked about Scott and then they did a flashback of Bobby it was one of the ones that was a roadblock for Scott and Laura uh, before they got married. And, you know, Laura shows up to Scotty's place trying to talk to him and Barbara Jean opens the door, you know, ex prostitute hooker she was, <laughs> you know, and kind of fluffs her off like, I'm a woman, you're a girl, you know, so I can give Scotty what he wants. He's not here yet, but he's coming and boy, when he gets here, you don't want to be here. So I remember that that kind of derailed a lot of things for Laura and Scotty until they overcame, you know, all of Bob, Barbara Jean's shenanigans. But it was really cute to see the younger versions of the actresses and then them in present day. That I, I really liked because that sent me on a nostalgia trip. And if that did for you, if, who, who out there liked that? If you liked the flashback scenes, you know, please comment that you liked the flashback scenes. Um, but anyway, it takes them on a journey to the quarter main house. And, you know, today, of course, was the big softball game that everybody in town plays this annual softball game. But they go to the quarter main's house and, and Michael, Ned, um, or Olivia, Brooklyn was there and Cardi and Sam go there and they you know, accuse Ned of being the one behind it. And Ned is like, I haven't talked politics in forever. I'm not interested, you know, in being the mayor. So what, I'm ex-mayor. You know, I'm not interested in that anymore. Um, and then the Cassidines are together at the top of the Metro Court at the pool. And um, Alexis is there and Laura shows up and they accuse Victor of being the one behind the article to recall Laura. And initially my thoughts are Victor too. He would do that. But Victor said, wait a minute, you all know me. If I'm gonna do something like that, I'm putting my name all over it. <laughs> I'm not afraid to let you know it's me. <laughs> so goodness, all right. Um, and then Sonny, C Curtis goes to Sonny. They call him Miss Wu. Um, and Miss Wu, of course, gives them information. And now Sonny owes her another favor, you know, because she says, yeah, I have my nephew Brad kind of spearheading, you know, the campaign or working on the campaign. You know, I don't feel Laura's, she didn't feel Laura's in her pocket enough, <laughs> but Sonny feels Laura is the best mayor because, you know, Laura does kind of look the other way. Um, and so does Jordan for that matter, where Sonny's concerned. So he says, look, she's a personal friend of mine. I consider it a favor. So Miss Wu gave up contacts, you know, who's all involved with it. And Curtis took it from there. And what they find out, which was interesting, this was a way to bring this character back into town, Cyrus Renault. He was taken from that maximum prison he was at out in California. He's back in Pittenville in Port Charles. And he is one of the, um, he says he's like a consultant when Laura of course goes to Pittenville to see him because Curtis uncovers that Cyrus is, Cyrus is back there or Jordan told Curtis, you know, she had just found out that he had been transferred back. So they tell Laura, and Laura goes to see him and he's like, yeah, please. Since you've been the mayor, crime has been up and the age is going on and on. You're not a good mayor. Plus, you know, you're partial to Wu and, and Corinthos and he just goes on and on. And finally, Laura tells him, you know what, Cyrus, I forgive you. I forgive you. And the look on that man's face, because remember, he wants approval more than anything. He wants the approval of his mother. He wants the approval of Laura more than anything. 
because I think in his mind, he considers them virtuous people, especially his mom. And if he could get some kind of approval from them, then that makes him feel better about himself. That makes him feel like he's worthy. And when he told, when she told him that, it's like she hit him with a Mack truck. He couldn't even hold the telephone anymore. The telephone just dropped, you know, to the, to the table area and he's just looking at her. And then she gets up and she, he's thinking like, no, no, no. You, that's not what, I, huh, you do? <laughs> you know, I mean, it took the wind right out of his sail. And she walked out of the room and, if, and then she kind of leaned against the wall and I was thinking, okay, now did that liberate her telling her dad or was that one of the best acting jobs and the hardest acting job she had to do? Because does she really forgive him? I mean, I don't know, but whatever it is, he believes it and, and it worked, but he ended up giving her information that no, they came to me. So ultimately, yeah, he spearheaded them, but Who's truly behind it? Who knows? And guess what? She knows Silas is, is partly behind it. And then Wu, Sonny told Wu, you know, Curtis told Wu and Sonny. And Miss Wu was like, listen, if I would have known that Cyrus Renault is involved in anything, I never, ever would have supported that. You know that. So Sonny, of course, believes her there. Um, because he knows that they they have a good thing going, and she would not want to to ruin that a good thing. So I really believe we just might get an honorable mention that because Laura was writing her rebuttal, she had the opportunity to write her rebuttal as mayor, and it was cute the way she narrated her rebuttal in voiceover and you could kind of see all of Port Charles coming together after the game at Charlie's. And that was kind of part of what her rebuttal was. It was really kind of a cute, cute episode yesterday, you know, with, with what Port Charles is all about, what they all mean to each other. They all come together, you know, and they all protect one of their own. And they even had Elizabeth, Laura went to go see Elizabeth and, in um, Shady Brook. And Maxie was there, which I'm thinking Elizabeth and Maxie have never been friends since Elizabeth stole Lucky for that period. I mean, not Elizabeth, Maxie stole Lucky from Elizabeth years ago during that period. Maxie was the one who actually aided and, and bought the oxy uh, cotton for him to get hooked on. You know, so they have not been ever really friends. And so she told Laura, are you sure Elizabeth is, is, is going to be happy this, or, or won't object to me being here? You know, but she was supposed to be in Lulu's place, you know, because Lulu couldn't come. So she came for Lulu. And in my mind, I started thinking, hmm, okay, I guess Lulu and Maxie were sister-in-law back when Maxie, I mean, not Lulu and Maxie. Lulu and Elizabeth were sister-in-laws when Elizabeth was married to Lucky, which was Lulu's brother. Okay, I could kind of see it, but far, far stretch from a visitor when Elizabeth clearly said she wanted no visitors except for Laura. And I mean, she doesn't want to see Finn. So my whole thing is why would she want to see Maxie? But Maxie gave her some makeup so that she could put, you know, makeup feel good about herself, Pre feel pretty while she was in there. So Elizabeth pretty much thanked her for it, but pretty much ignored the fact that Maxie was really there. Um, and she was of course asking about her boys, but I kind of think that was just a way for this filler episode to bring Elizabeth as one of the main characters of General Hospital in for this particular episode. Um, it almost remind you, was this Jeannie Francis's 10,000th episode on General Hospital. I mean, there had to be a reason for this particular show revolving around Laura in Port Charles. I mean, and I, we just don't know what it is, but it was a cute filler episode back down memory lane, had key players in it. And I mean, I, I was really I was excited to see it. it. It was a good episode. So let's see. I think we should be back on track tomorrow. 
you know, on Thursday, we'll probably be right back into the actual storyline of General Hospital. And I will be back tomorrow to talk about um, GH for, for the fans. And, you know, we're going to have a great time tomorrow. But you know what? I kind of think there's some comments. I have a comment that I do want to talk about. I'm trying to pull up my comment right now. Uh, one of, we had a comment from a fan, and, and believe me, please, give comments. I love comments um, because that gives me something to talk about. The comment was from our uh, Monday show, um, and the this was from Hello There, and Hello There thought that Monday show was a pretty good show. Um, she says, even though a lot of people may have thought it was boring, she liked the fact that she thinks General Hospital is starting to ramp up. I think so too. The storylines are coming, coming along better. Um, she is really looking forward to the Esme Ryan storyline really wrapping up. Um, and she's hoping that, you know, the new storyline brings General Hospital the ratings up because you know the ratings general hospital for some reason doesn't beat out cbs shows and i don't understand that i mean to me cbs show i'm, I'm not cb yeah cbs shows they move fast but the storylines to me aren't that great you know i mean and i'm not gonna bash them and because I, I don't bash them I, I i peek in on the bold and the beautiful once every quarter a couple times every quarter because really to me that's all you need the bold and the beautiful tends to run their storylines in circles. Their characters only pick the same two, three women that they circle around or the same one, the two men they circle around. They don't really branch out. It's like LA has nobody else. It's really in incredible. Um, and the young and the restless, I, I will peek in on the young and the restless. It's just sometimes to me, the, the stories are slower General hospital storylines to me tend to be more dynamic, more entertaining. And, and I just don't understand why they're not on top. So thank you so much. Hello there for your comments. And please, everyone, give me comments. I love, love, love to uh, see some comments so that I can highlight and talk about them. Please give a thumbs up to this video. Please hit subscribe, hit subscribe and check that alert bell, ring the bell so that you can get an alert every time I do an episode. See you tomorrow.